doing well and reading good books. This week is Banned Books Week in most places. I know that some places it is celebrated during different times, but it seems that most of my social media friends are celebrating this week, so here we are. Today, I thought I would talk about banned books, including books on my shelves that have been banned or challenged and I have yet to read. If you have watched my videos before, welcome back. If you are new, thanks for joining us. My name is Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl. I tend to talk about diverse books, authors, and genres, as well as Canadian literature. If that's something that interests you, please hit subscribe and stick around. So today I will talk about Canadian literature, classics, YA, and some of my favorite books that have been banned and challenged. We're going to start with Canadian literature and we will begin with the queen of Canadian literature herself, Margaret Atwood. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood is one of the world's most widely challenged books, mostly for profane language, anti-Christian overtones, violence, and sexual content. And I think that's very interesting about this, and we'll talk more about this when we read The Handmaid's Tale in Mondays with Margaret. Um, so that series is coming up, but Margaret has said numerous times that she didn't include anything in The Handmaid's Tale that didn't actually happen in real life. So we have people who are upset that words were written on a page, but hopefully there's that same anger and passion when it's happening in our world. And as Margaret says, a word after a word after a word is power. One of my favorite Canadian authors, Lawrence Hill, has met some negative reaction to his incredible book, The Book of Negroes. The title itself was an issue for some publishers uh, in the US, Norway, Australia, New Zealand. They changed the title to Someone Knows My Name, um, even though The Book of Negroes is an actual historical document. So within Canada, the title in Quebec is Aminata, which is the name of the main character. And I will include a link in the description below to an interview with Lawrence Hill. And in that interview, he responds to how he reacted to people burning a copy of his book. I loved Lives of Girls and Women by Alice Munro, which was written in 1971. And I think I read it sometime in the early 90s. It's about a young girl coming of age in rural Ontario in the 1940s and what she experiences on the journey to womanhood. Um, it's been challenged because of its philosophy and language. And I guess my challenge back would be try and find a woman who has grown up without a struggle or crisis. A Canadian book that has been on my shelf uh, for a long time is The Apprenticeship of Duddy Kravitz by Mordecai Rickler. And I have heard that Duddy Kravitz is a character that sticks with you. It was written in 1959 and it has been sitting on my shelf for at least since the mid-90s. It has been challenged for offensive language and sexual content. The story itself sounds like something I would really enjoy. Duddy Kravitz is a Jewish immigrant um, in Montreal and he wants to be somebody and it's about the lessons that he learns along the way. Young adult books always seem to make their way to banned and challenged book lists. One of them being one of my favorites in 2020 so far, and that is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I've talked about this book in previous videos, but it has been challenged because of descriptions of masturbation, sex, drugs, and suicide. Another YA book, Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, is a story about young love and acceptance. It has been challenged for profanity and sexual content. Third, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom. It might be one of the most famous YA band books. And this book was first published in 1970 and there has often been controversy around this book because it talks about puberty and teen sexuality. Regardless, it continues to gain popularity with each generation and I think it might be a reread for me, hopefully sometime soon. One of the YA books that I'm hoping to get to by the end of the year is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This book has been getting rave reviews for three years since it's been published, but it has always been challenged because some believe it's an indoctrination of distrust of the police, which is definitely interesting in our times now, so I'm really hoping to get to this one. Classics are often on the list of banned or challenged books as well. 
A few of my favorite classics that have been on these lists is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. It's still taught in schools, but it has been challenged for language and sexual content. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck is another book that is still taught in schools. It has been challenged because of vulgarity, racism, and treatment of women. It's one of my favorites. Another favorite classic book that has been banned is The Color Purple by Alice Walker. This story has been banned at various times for sexual content, violence, and abuse. One of the classics that has been banned and has been on my shelf for some time is Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. It was the most censored book in high schools between 1961 and 1982, and it has been banned for various reasons, uh, prostitution, premarital sex, alcohol abuse, and I'm really looking forward to finally reading about this Holden Caulfield fella I've heard so much about. A number of my favorite books have been banned or challenged. I will share three with you. Um, first is The Kite Runner by Khalid Hosseini. This is a heartbreaking and beautifully written story that has been challenged since its publication in 2003. It was challenged for sexual violence, Islamophobia, offensive language, and some have even thought it would inspire terrorism. Another book that I loved is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. This was the first book that my book club read over eight years ago, and I learned so much from this book and was grateful to the author for making this story accessible. This book is scientific, and it is about Henrietta Lacks, who was a black woman who was diagnosed with cervical cancer in the early 1950s, and her cells, known as HeLa cells, were the first human cells to re be reproduced in culture. They were also taken without her consent. So why was this book challenged? Well, in an article I read from 2015, a parent thought the book was pornographic. And I loved Skloot's response. She said, just in time for Banned Books Week, Skloot tweeted, she, she tweeted this out, a parent in Tennessee confuses gynecology with pornography and tries to ban my book. I will leave a link to that article in the description below. Finally, another one of my favorite books of 2020, Bear Town by Frederick Backman was banned by a North Carolina school district in 2017. Parents complained about its vulgar, graphic, and just unnecessary subject matter. The issue was dealt with by saying that the book was not initially on the approved list and that it was a new teacher who maybe didn't know the protocol. The last banned book I want to talk about is The Satanic Verses by Sam and Rushdie, which I didn't grab for my shelf, so I will put a picture of it up here. This book has been on my shelf forever. I find it intimidating, a little daunting because of its size. I think it's over a thousand pages. I'll have to double check. Um, however, I am incredibly curious about this and I know that I will eventually read it. It was first published in 1988 and it was long listed for the Booker Prize, but controversy soon followed with accusations of it being blasphemy, having hate speech and mocking Islam. There were several unsuccessful assassination attempts on Sam and Rushdie, and there were also attacks on individuals who were connected to the book in some way, including the murder of Hitoshi Garashi. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. He was the Japanese translator of the Satanic Verses. So this one will eventually get read. I just don't know when. Please let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these banned or challenged books. Or please let me know what your favorite banned books are or what you are reading during Banned Books Week. I will leave a list of the books mentioned in the video as well as some of the articles that I talked about. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to make every day an adventure. Mm -hmm.